So what we're going to do tonight, we're not going to have a full-blown lesson, but before we pray for healing, we're going to do a whirlwind tour through the scriptures. It's very hard to have faith for something you're not sure God has promised you. It's very hard to have faith if you're not sure God wants to heal you. And we're going to see from the scriptures in just a, a brief tour through that it is the Lord's will to heal. He wants to heal you more than you want to be healed. Now let me ask you this. If you had a kid, a lot of us have kids, and they were terribly sick, would you heal them if you had the power? Well, yeah. Why? Because your heart is good towards your kids. You love your kids. Well, is our Father's heart any less good? Amen? Stick with me here. We're just going to read through a few scriptures. Psalm 105, verse 37. This is when he brought them out of Egypt, out of years of slavery in Egypt. It says, Then he brought them out with silver and gold, and among his tribes there was not one who stumbled. Now, I, we're going to look at two different translations tonight. The New American Standard that we usually use, and then a Young's Literal. The reason I like the Young's Literal is some people try to say, well, you just try to kind of twist the scriptures to put your theology in. And I can't go to the Greek because I don't speak Greek. I wish I could. But Young, Mr. Young, who did know the Hebrew, did know the Greek, made a very literal translation, which makes it a little choppy, but you can tell exactly what it's saying. So let's read it in the Young's Literal Translation. It happened, there it is. It says, He bringeth them out with silver and gold, and there is not in his tribes a feeble one. They brought out from Egypt a million and a half people. That is a lot of people. So there were a lot of older folks. He says, among the other folks, nobody got carried. Now, I saw the movie like you did, the Ten Commandments. And in the movie, you saw people being carried in litters and stuff. That is not true according to the Word of God. He brought all those people out of bondage, and not one of them had to be carried. Didn't matter if you were 85, you walked because you were healed. Isn't that wonderful? Let's look at Psalm 107, verses 19 to 20. It says, then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. What are we supposed to do when we are in trouble? Cry out. Cry out. And read this one with me. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. So even as you're listening to the word of God being taught or hearing the word, it has healing power within it. Right. Exodus 15, 26. We're going to go flying here because I, I want to leave plenty of time to pray, but... This is right after they've come out of Egypt. They don't know God very well, and he's kind of introducing himself. He said, If you will give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have put on the Egyptians, for I, the Lord, am your healer. Now, we have, don't have a lot of time to go in it, but when it says put diseases on, it's in a permissive sense. It's more like I will not allow them to come on. All right? Sometimes we allow stuff to come on us through getting out away from the perfect will of God. Okay, I hate to say it, but you know, we probably, you can't allow sickness to come on you just by worrying too much. Yeah. Worrying will bring sick, okay? Yeah. But he said, I, the Lord, am your healer. Did anybody put a gun to God's head and say, speak these words? No. Whose idea is it for him to be your healer as well as your savior? It's his idea. All right, Malachi 3, 6. It says, I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you, O sons of Jacob, are not consumed. Some people will say, well, you know, in the Old Testament, he loved to heal, but he doesn't anymore. Well, there's two scriptures. This one, it says, I don't change it. In Hebrews 13, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. He loves to heal. Now, the next part, I hope you'll humor me, is 2 Chronicles chapter 30. It's one of my favorite scriptures. And it, there was a, they've been away from God, and they're trying to come back. And Hezekiah, they haven't been doing the temple sacrifices, none of the stuff they're supposed to do. And so it says, For there were many in the assembly who had not consecrated themselves. They want to celebrate Passover. The trouble with celebrating Passover is there's many, many rituals that have to be done, many of uh, ordinances you have to observe to do it all right. Have you ever been on your way back to God, but you weren't quite back yet? Yeah. Well, this will encourage you. Look what it says. There were many in the assembly who had not consecrated themselves. 
Therefore the Levites were over the slaughter of the Passover lambs for everyone who was unclean in order to consecrate them to the Lord. So a lot of folks, they were there, they wanted to serve God, but they, in the Old Testament, there were many, many hoops to jump through. Have you read it? Many, many, okay? Yeah. For a multitude of the people, even from many from Ephraim and Manasseh, Issachar and Zebulun, had not purified themselves. And yet, they ate the Passover otherwise than prescribed. And what does that mean? We're here, we want to serve you, we really want to get back with God, but we haven't gone through all the rituals. Are you following me here? Right. I want you to see the heart of God. The king prayed for them, saying, May the good Lord pardon everyone who prepares his heart to seek the God, to seek God, the Lord God of his fathers, though not according to the purification rules of the sanctuary. He said, if their heart's right toward you, and they're really coming back to you, then please, even if they haven't done everything right, would you just overlook it? We'll get it right. Right? That's what he's praying. Now look at the next verse. I love this so much. So the Lord heard Hezekiah, and healed the people. Well, where did that come from? He wasn't praying for healing. Listen, God is looking for a way into your life so he can heal you. He, he's not looking for an excuse not to heal you. Are you following me? He's looking. There, I love that part where it says, nothing will separate us. And that song, oh Lord, you search me. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing can separate you from the healing of power of God but you. You, you have to be wanting to be healed. And you have to reach out and take it. Hallelujah. Okay, the next verse. How are we doing for time? Now this is the place. We have some stories in Isaiah 53. We have many places where God healed. One question that comes up is, why is sin a problem to begin with? Sin is a problem because we rebelled against God. All rebellion opens the door to the devil. Okay, devil Sicknesses of the devil. And you say, Pastor, you're saying I'm a bad person. I'm saying way back in the Garden of Eden, there wasn't any sickness. But once we said, no, we'll do whatever we want, you know the story from there, right? Jesus came so that he could heal you legally. You understand? He couldn't take you to heaven until the price had been paid. The Old Testament saints did not just go to heaven, though the price had not been paid. They stayed in a place called paradise until Jesus was raised from the dead. We talked about that the other night. You would not be able to be healed legally if somebody hadn't paid the price for your healing. And this is talking about the price that was paid. Read it with me. Surely our griefs he himself bore and our sorrows he carried. If you look in the Hebrew, and I'll show you in the Youngs, it's surely our sicknesses he himself bore and our pains he carried. They didn't, in other places, those same Hebrew words are tra translated sicknesses and pains. Okay, start over. Surely our griefs he himself bore and our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Read it with me. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastisement for our well-being fell on him. And by his scourging, we are healed. So at the cross, he paid for your sins. But at the scourging post, if you saw Mel Gibson's The Passion of the of the price, how horrible it was at the scourging post. He paid for your healing. He paid for you not to have diabetes or any other horrible thing. Now I'd like to read it in Mr. Young's translation. It's choppy, but it's very literal. Read it with me. Surely our sicknesses he hath borne, and our pains he hath carried them. And we have esteemed him plagued, smitten of God, and afflicted. So what did he carry? Sicknesses and pains, right? Okay, read with me. And he is pierced for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is on him, and by his bruise there is healing for us. So legally, God can heal every single person here tonight, and he wants to. It's the great desire of his heart to heal you. Now, if we read, if you go back to verse 4, the first part of the verse where it says, Surely our sicknesses he hath borne. Matthew quotes that. If we could go to Matthew 8, 16 to 17. We're just going to take five more minutes for scriptures. and So we have plenty of time to pray. But isn't this good to see it? It's all through the Bible. I don't care which part of the Bible you want to look at. God was healing somebody. This is Jesus. When evening came, they brought to him many who were even possessed. And he cast out the spirits with a word and healed what percentage that were ill. All. Oh. This was to fulfill what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet, read it with me, 
he himself took our infirmities and carried away our diseases. So you see that when Matthew quotes the verse in Isaiah, he quotes it as the Lord carrying sicknesses, infirmities, and diseases. Hallelujah. So that means that he fully intends for us to live healthy lives. Glory to God. 1 Peter 2.24 quotes the second verse in Isaiah, and he says, read it with me, He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. For by his wounds you were healed. Now let's read Mr. Young's translation. Read it with me. Who our sins himself did bear in his body upon the tree, that to the sins having died to the righteousness we may live, by whose stripes you were healed. How many of you were healed at the cross? Er, it, yeah, we were healed. And you say, why is it the devil will try anything in the world to try to talk you out of your healing. In a minute, I'm going to give a, let a couple people give their testimonies who had life-threatening conditions that God is healed because God is faithful. Hallelujah. Matthew 4, 23. we got four more minutes. I'm going to cram a few more in. Are you, can you feel your faith rising as you read this? The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. It is very hard to walk up to God and ask Him to heal when you have no clue if the Almighty wants to heal you. But you can see in this an absolute unanimity of the scriptures, right? Yeah. Read it with me. Jesus was going throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness among the people. Matthew 9.35 says almost the same thing. Read it with me. Jesus was going through all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Except what? What was too hard to hear? We think, well, 85% he could heal, or 95%, but you know, some things are hard. Are you kidding me? There's nothing hard for God. I don't care how long it's been since your pancreas has it where God is God. Amen. All right? Hallelujah. I love Luke 16, Luke 6, 17 to 19. <coughs> Read it with me. Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place. And there was a large crowd of his disciples and a great throng of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were being cured. Now look at verse 19. And all the people were trying to touch him, for power was coming from him and healing them all. Now it's real easy to think, oh, if only I could see Jesus here tonight. You don't have to see him to reach out and touch him by faith. He is here if he's, tell if he's a truth teller, he's here. Yeah. Matthew 18, he said, if two of you gather in my name, if wherever two or three of you are gathered in my name, well, how many groups of two or three do we have here? A bunch, right? I am there in their midst. So he's here to heal. He is by nature a healer. Anytime God shows up, healing happens. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're just going to read one more scripture, 3 John 2, and we'll read it in both versions. Did, okay, let's read it with me. Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health, just as your soul prospers. Now pause a minute. John wrote those words, but who was speaking through the Apostle John? God the Holy Spirit. Don't we all agree that God the Holy Spirit spoke the Bible? That means that God the Holy Spirit is praying for you that in every way you prosper. That means you sit down and pay your bills. You don't figure out which one you can pay. That's God's best. And stop real quiet. Hey, you know what? You might as you might as well aspire to it at least. It's God's desire. Right. I, he prays that you may prosper and be in what kind of health? Good. Good health. Just as your soul prospers. I'm finding out that as you get older, you can live in better health every year if your revelation increases. You're, yeah. Now the doctors may not say that, but the doc, doctors, God bless them. We studied this morning, spirit, soul, and body. We probably don't have that up tonight, did we? I forgot to put it up this morning. But you are spirit. Your spirit, if you're born again, is complete. If you're not born again, you need to ask Jesus to come into your heart tonight and be born again. Your spirit is complete. 
your mind and your will and your emotions are in the process of being recalled, being restored, okay? Your body is simply the temple that you live in, and it has been redeemed as much as you... When he redeemed you, he didn't redeem you from here up. Right. He redeemed every part of you, and the devil has a right to no part of you. Here you see a diagram that's helpful. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5.23, Paul prayed that our whole spirit, soul, and body would be set apart complete, made whole through Jesus. Spirit, soul, and body. Your spirit is the part made in the image of God. Your soul is your mind and will and your emotions. And your body, you know. Okay? Tonight we're talking body, but can I tell you a secret? Emotions can get healed by the same healer who heals bodies. Right. I've been in healing services where they didn't say one word about emotional healing, and God fixed my emotions. Okay? Now, I, I really love if a couple, three people, I want you to understand, we're not, the only reason we have healing services is because every time we do, people get healed. Every time we do, burdens are lifted. So could we have a couple of people that, is Patty here? I wouldn't, yeah, Patty, come on up. I like Patty because she makes it real down to earth. She doesn't try to, try to super spiritualize any, I love everybody, you know what I mean? I, I love testimonies. When I get to heaven, I'm almost everybody's testimony. <laughs> you know why? Because God, just like he never creates two snowflakes alike, he never moves in lives two way. Everybody's testimony is unique. She was told she had cancer in her face and that it would be deforming, right? Why don't you stand up? Thank you. Uh, hello? Okay. Sorry, this is uh, not very comfortable doing this. But um, yeah, uh, a few years ago, uh, 2007, I had I had a tumor that reoccurred. I had it um, from 1999, somewhere in that area. And uh, it reoccurred. Went to the doctors, you know, thinking, oh, this is just the same thing I had before. And, and um, they tested, they did three tests the biopsy, the PET scans, and the CAT scans, and every single one of them came back malignant. Uh, it was a carcinoma. Um, so the doctor I went to see is um, in Frankfurt. He was an ENT, and he told me, you know, we're gonna, we can't remove it. It's, it the nerves are completely wrapped around the tumor, and um, removing it is going to paralyze your face. It's just, you know, it wasn't a possibility. I didn't like that answer. First of all, I had to go through the, you know, woe is me, you get a report like that, and kind of the sadness. And I had been under teaching, healing teaching for a long time. And I really kind of beat myself up for that response because I knew it wasn't the response I was supposed to have. But, I, you know, I had it here, but I really didn't have it in me. So, you know, I, I did kind of go through, you know, the cry and the, you know, you know, why do, you know, what's going on. And I asked for prayer, and this church really lifted me up, and they prayed. Um, I went to Karen. She had done these really nice healing scriptures and that she had printed out for Bill, and she had made copies for me. I just put them all over my house, and after a week, just a sudden peace came over me. And I didn't have the verification of healing, but I had that everything was okay. This is in my hands. I got it. And the, only, and the Lord told me, just pray for the surgeon, because by this point, I went to another doctor. I said, I didn't like the first doctor. Well, another one, I wanted out. Anyway, so I had the surgery done, and... Uh, and, you know, I was okay. Everything from that point on was just like... It wasn't malignant, it wasn't malignant, was it? Right. So like, they, did the surgery, was they did the surgery, and a week later I go back, and I said, you know, so what's important? He said, it's benign. <laughs> and I was like, and I was after, you know, these three tests. Not only that, um, and I always love to tell this part, <laughs> because I was praying for healing from that, but the surgery that I had previously had left me uh, with no feeling in my ears, my ear and part of that face. After that surgery, I had feeling in my ear to where I could feel earrings and, and, and so forth. So I asked the surgeon about it, and he said, I can't explain it. I said, nerves don't repair themselves. <laughs> can't explain. And I also asked, I said, and what about that nerve that was wrapped around the tumor? He said, I didn't see the nerve. But, you know, I didn't even see it. So he didn't even have to, you know, however God removed that out of his way, that obstacle out of his way. And we were praying for him for his high blood pressure to come down, and God just happened completely healed his diabetes 100% gone. So, and one more person. I know there's lots of people here who have been healed. Anybody else want to give a healing testimony before I pick you out? <laughs> Tell me about your arm, Anna. I know we talked about the stroke. She gave a, a testimony this morning where she backed down the stroke, but didn't you have cancer that you had to stand against too? I had cancer in both arms. Yeah. And that lady wouldn't take it. They wanted me to have radiation. All of, all of the treatments, the, um, 
uh, radiation and whatever the treatments were. And I said, no, I don't need that. I said, because I am healed. You said, you got it all, it's gone. And I didn't take any treatments. But I did have melanoma on the right and the left arm. And now 10 Almost years ago. in the same identical spot. Was that 10 years ago? It's been a long time. It's, um, yeah. One of them has been five years and the other one has been seven. Thank God. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Thank <coughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you, we could go on for a long time. Bill was healed of cancer, Sherry of cancer. Mm -hmm. All these doctors, you know, and they're, we're not against the doctors. They're saying what they know in the natural. But what I want you to understand, we're not bound by the natural. If you have a father who loves you, you do that So why don't we just sing a song, and then we're going to I will start. Let, if anybody wants, how many want healing? Prayer for healing tonight. I'll tell you, God's good for it all. We're going to pray. And I invite everybody else to come up and help us pray. There's nothing better than seeing somebody get a miracle.